uh, the app script manifest files um so it's just a, a json file it's actually in every um script project so either container bound or standalone it's 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 always there by default it's actually hidden so um to view it um from the script editor you can go view uh, show manifest file um if you're doing something with a command line tool or working offline um if it's a standalone script it's accessible uh, through the drive api as well so if you want to get access to it, it's just a, a json file and it um just records um some settings for the the script project that you're working on um so uh, one of the recommendations actually we will make is the that um it's not recommended to have your uh, manifest file visible for other people so that their suggestion is to, to hide it immediately um obvious how to um, hide your manifest file um, but it's basically unticking it from the script editor editor view menu so what's actually in the manifest file what, what can you do within your project setting so i'll go through uh, the kind of headlines here so one of the things you can do is the time zones so you can actually set the script time zone um, so this can be useful if you're um, using for example a clock trigger um, to set a the, the correct time. Um, so, the, in terms of the time zone uh, string, it, it it's a zone ID, which I think is a, a Java thing. There's a link to it, so you can um, see uh, which zone IDs. Um, you can also set this from the, the script editor um, menu as well. Things that often catches people out is if you've got a container bound script um the time zone can be set in the spreadsheet and the script um or the or the doc wherever you've bound your script to um so that can cause confusion um because you can have different time zones one for the script one for what whatever the container bound application has um i think one of the biggest things within um the manifest files is um, scopes. So for a number of years, there's been quite a bit of feedback about the scopes. So these are uh, the permission levels that your scripts run. Um, so um, these have historically been very broad. So if you, for example, uh, include something like spreadsheet app uh, within your uh, script project, then uh, the permissions are quite broad. what the scopes side of this lets, lets you control. So here we've got an example with the, um, the Slides app. So um, if you include Slides app in your uh, script project, when you do the, uh, or the user goes through your authentication flow, it's, uh, they'll be prompted um, uh, with the notification that um, the script will view and manage your slide presentation. So we, click on the information button, you can see it's quite broad. So create new presentations, view and modify existing presentations and share presentations with others. One option we had um, uh, is to use the uh, only current document um, markup. So that would restrict it to the application that the script was bound to. Um, so that narrowed uh, the, the scope slightly within the manifest file, we can actually uh, tighten this even more. So uh, for example, if you just want to read data uh, within your application, um, you, you can specify that uh, in uh, the URL of scopes. So you can actually have uh, multiple uh, scopes in here. It doesn't just have to be a single one, it's a uh, array value. So in this case, we're saying presentation read only. So uh, with this one, it's um the as part of the authentication flow the user will be prompted um, that the script wants to view your slide presentation so um here it's it's more limited than than uh um uh write so it's just read not read and write um so trying this out um i thought i'd give it a go with slides up 
and um, uh, so I set the scope with um, uh, read only, and I actually got an error message. So um, the error I got was uh, shown here: is you, you don't have get active presentation. So um, I I don't. For me, this this was un unexpected behavior. Um, so I've actually raised this as an issue ticket. Um, so for me, uh, you know, getting the active presentation shouldn't have require uh, a right um, scope. Um, looking at the actual slides of Ant Service um, instead of App Service, um, the code actually works. Um, so. Um, you can set the scope of read only and, and just read the data and get that um, the prompt to the user. Um, so currently, something to be aware of um, if you're using a limited scope within the, the G Suite core services, um, like spreadsheets, docs, and, and slides app. Um, as I mentioned, um, you can uh, we, we already had uh, only current doc as a way to limit the scope. So um, this was included in the document as a, um, a comment and this was parsed and detected. Um, you can include these as um, scopes in your manifest if you want. So um, the current the doc current only works for um, across the different products. Um, so um, it, it's, it's no different, so it, it can perhaps be just how you prefer um, to uh, manage your projects. Is that a per function directive? Uh, that'll be for the entire script project. Um, okay. so, so you only need it once. Yeah. One of the advantages of using only current document is it avoids needing to go through that verification process. Um, so this was something. I needed to implement on one of my projects, which is a, uh, a spreadsheet and it has a container bound script to it. So um, because people are making a copy of that project each time, it, it's impractical to actually go through verification because when a copy is made of that project, um, basically the, the user would need to go through the verification pr process themselves. Because of what the script was doing, it was only needing to access the current um, document. Um, so by included, including that in the in the, the, the script editor, it avoids the app verification warning. So just the, the normal authentic um, authentication flow. Um, so that can be useful if you're having app verification headaches. Um, obviously, it's limited in terms of the scenario of what you what you're trying to do. Um, so. In my case, I had to modify my code slightly because it was uh, wanting to read a template from a, another spreadsheet. Uh, and that wasn't permitted with the only current doc um, scope. Um, so the way around it for me was to actually have these templates hidden in the, the copy the user take, took and then use script to hide or um, uh, show uh, these templates as needed. Yeah, that's smart. It's pretty useful too. Less friction for the user. So one of the other things that is quite handy is that um, when you're um, using other Google services that are not part of um, uh, kind of the, the core offering in, in app script, um, you can actually include uh, the scope in, in the manifest. And what that means is that when the user comes to authentication, they're getting uh, the, the authentication prompt in, in, at the same time as the other uh, prompts that they're getting. So um, hopefully you just saw on the slides there, the flow showing, uh, in this case, managing photos. Um, so uh, um, Remain has a, a number of um, libraries that allow you to access Firebase and Picasa. Um, and so what he's done is he's updated the, the manifest within those libraries um, so that the, the authentication is included as part of that. So um, it's a lot smoother in terms of you're not asking people to authenticate once against your script. And then when you include the library, uh, 
you need to do a separate authentication. It's all in one. Um, the key thing to note here, this is just for Google products. So if you're authenticating um, against something like Twitter or another service, um, you're still going to um, have to do a, a kind of two-step authentication flow. Um, so um, when you're including um, uh, scopes in the in the library, uh, and, and the script project uses that library, those new scopes are, are detected and automatically added to your project, um, which is great. So you, you, you don't need to worry about those. Um, there is a scenario, though, if you're um, creating your own script project, it's using the library, and you want to specify your own OAuth um, scopes um, as part of your project, um, this, uh, you should include the OAuth scopes that were included in the library, so you can um, see which scopes are required as part of the project through the file project properties in the scopes tab. So in this top image, you can see I've imported the Picasa app library. These are all the scopes that it needs to run. So if I'm want, wanting to add additional scopes um, to my project uh, through the manifest file, I need to include those. Um, as well as any other ones I want to specify. If you don't need to specify or don't want to specify a manifest file, uh, leaving OAuth scopes blank is perfectly fine. An app script will just de automatically detect what scopes it needs and then prompt the user for it. Um, so, um, something just to be aware of. Um, so, I think the, the basic advice is. Um, if you're using libraries and you're not bothering uh, to add additional scopes for, through the manifest file, um, there's nothing to worry about. It's only if you are doing something in the manifest file to specify additional scopes um, that you need to be uh, careful. So another feature of the manifest file is the option to, for, for you to specify um, whitelisting URLs. So this is in association with URL fetch app. So uh, for example, uh, one of my projects is using the Twitter API. So uh, as, as part of the, the um, manifest, you can specify that your, your script is only going to be else. Um, something to note is there's a couple of things here. So um, when I was running tests, um, when I included a, a whitelist URLs in the manifest files, for the end user, it's not displayed. So they don't know that you've, you've limited your uh, URL fetch calls to a, um, a set of URLs. Um, so to them, it, it's, uh, there, there's no difference. This may change in the future. Um, I don't know. Um, the other thing I discovered, so in the previous example uh, where um, OAuth scopes were defined in a library file uh, and automatically detected in your script project that was using that library, uh, whitelisting isn't automatically detected. So if a library is specifying uh, a URL fetch whitelist, um, it, it's not automatically pulled into the the script project using that library. Um, so it's only if the script project itself specifies a URL fetch um, whitelist that it's actually used. Um, and the image at the bottom actually shows the, the error message that users will see or, or, or will be thrown. Um, so it'll, it'll say uh, the reason that you can't hit something if, you're, if you've specified a URL fetch um, list um, is because it's not in the script manifest, which may cause some head scratching from the end user as they start wondering what's a, what's a script manifest. So you may get um, support requests around that. I'm guessing uh, URL fetch whitelisting is going to be more used by Google for their in internal app verification process. Um, so it, it, it might just lead to a quicker green light in terms of 
your application being verified, or it might be something that they specify um, as part of the app verification process. Um, so in terms of the URL format, um, there are a couple of requirements. I think one of the big ones is that there's no wildcard usage in here. So you can uh, you can specify um, a prefix um, and then URL fetch will basically allow anything that has that prefix in URL um, up, up to um, uh, the path. Um, but it, it does, you know, if you've got something on, on different subdomains, then you need to sp specify those different subdomains in each of the. Uh, the other thing is all the whitelisting URLs um, need to be HTTPS, so over a secure connection. Um, so dependencies, so. Um, uh, as part of the dependencies, um, advanced services and, and libraries are included. Um, so in this example, um, you can see how the data is laid out. So at the top, we've got an enabled advanced service of um, sheets, and it's um, specifying a user symbol, a service ID, and a version. And in the script project, um, it also has a, a library of the Kesa app. Um, when you're adding advanced services and libraries, the manifest file um, is automatically updated. Um, so you don't need to worry about specifying these in the manifest file um, for them to work. Um, that the existing process still still runs quite happily and smoothly. On enabled advanced services, um, there's And the advanced service in a, another um, script project. Um, but you can't set up the API console um, for it. Um, so um, I think that will probably change. Uh, it seems that uh, the manifest files are, are version one, and I think there's more to come in terms of um, app script deployment um, where we might be using uh, enabled advanced services and hooking it into uh, a console project. Um, libraries um, are slightly different because um, there, there's generally no console project set up, um, although that may depend on the library. Um, so there are options there of actually um, specifying um, libraries in script projects and doing things like updating the, the version number of, of that library, which I think is going to be the most useful feature. Uh, and I've got an example in a second that we'll, we'll go through that. Um, so web app and execution API. So um, as Alan uh, discovered as part of the community spotlight stuff, um, there's a, a new um, uh, option within the script register to deploy from a manifest file. Um, so this allow, allows you to deploy web app and execution API. So um, within the manifest file, again, these are um, automatically written when you when you use the deploy uh, menu option. So it will detect if you what what setting you you've got in terms of access and execute. Um, there, it used to be that you could, through script, deploy a web app. Um, that's still not uh, possible even with the manifest file. So basically, all you're doing for the manifest file is there's an option to see and edit who has access and who, uh, in the case of web app, uh, that that web app executes as. Um, so I think, again, this is going to be an area where there's potentially going to be um, more available and achievable in terms of what you can do, but it's not currently there. Um, Gmail, so uh, this is where um, we, we started seeing 
reference to a manifest file. Um, so this is related to the add-on uh, and there's um, a whole host of different things that you specify and uh, are required for Gmail add-ons in the manifest file. Um, so I don't know, again, if this is an indication of the future in, in terms of how other add-ons are developed for uh, sheets, docs, forms and slides, um, whether this model is reused uh, as part of that. But um, um, this is entirely speculation. So, but uh, there's so much stuff um, as part of Gmail. I'm not going to cover it as part of the show, but we might come back to it as um, another show. Um, but the documentation is online if you want to have a look at it. So, um, I thought I'd just so, in terms of what's achievable or what's useful within manifest files, I think specifying scope is, is one of the big things. The other thing was um, I mentioned uh, around libraries. So, um, manifest app isn't a, a Google. Uh, App script service, it's uh, another project developed by um, Canchi. So um, basically, this allows you to uh, work with uh, manifest files from um, standalone script files. Using setting up his manifest app, um, you can get, uh, you can basically update uh, the you know, the library version that uh, uh, another script project that you have access to is using. Um, so it's, I just want to quickly uh, show you how that works in practice. Here I've got um, a script project and I've just set this up. So currently if we look in the libraries here, um, it's just got the manifest app. I'm, the only reason you're seeing manifest app here is because I'm using the same script project um, to change things around that also has manifest app in it. So when you're specifying a, uh, the project ID, it, it can be any app script project that you, you have um, edit access to. Um, so this means you know if you have a, a list of app script projects that you've deployed to clients, potentially there's a way for you to to access uh, the manifest for, for each of those script projects and, and do something. So the first function here is just going to um, it's going to add the, the Picasa app. Um, so here's just the um, the kind of the shorthand um, the version of, of how it's um, referenced in your script. This is just the uh, the the script ID, so as you would add a script um, to through the library's dialog, and this is the version number. So um, if I click run this, just to add. So now when I go into the libraries, we can see that the CASA app has been added, and it's got the version number and the, the identifier as we require. Um, so, say for example, you know you've you're distributing code as part of the library. You uh, update uh, the version um, script projects are using, um, uh, which are using that library. Um, you can do that again. So, again, we're, we're just getting the manifest. We're seeing if the Picasa app library exists. Um, and if it does, uh, uninstall it and then install it with the new version. So we're going to move from version 13 to, to version 20, 22 on this. So if I run this code, to the libraries, we'll see it's updated to 22. Um, and you can remove stuff as well. Um, so I think that's quite. And, and the, you know, if you're developing um, scripts um, and distributing them, it, it, it's essentially a handy, handy way of um, 
updating the library versions. I know people do workarounds with using the uh, developer modes so that um, the, the you know, scripts that you've developed and distributed um, get the latest code, but this gives you a bit more control about which which version you're using. So it still allows you to do some testing within the same script project. Let's create the library um, before pushing it out. Um, so pretty much it in terms of um, what I wanted to highlight in terms of manifest files. Um, so as I say, I think it's a work in progress from Google. I think it's interesting to see what is there already. Um, I think it's limited in the functionality that's useful for developers, um, but it, it looks like a, a lot of opportunity. Hopefully that's been useful. All questions are, I'm happy to take those now or any, anything else people want to raise. Well, I guess if the floor is open, um, the Gmail add-ons, you know, n just noting, you know, they're they're different in in that they use cards, yeah. and so they work on mobile and and not not restricted to desktop. Uh, along those lines, what about um, the rest of the add-ons? Uh, will we ever see those working in, like, say, the Sheets version, uh, the Sheets app that runs on iOS mm -hmm. or Android? I so. We did have um, Android add-ons, and I think that was a complete botch. I've looked at those, and the integration within the the mobile products is it's just not there. And so I think the model that Google have got for Gmail add-ons, I think, does create interesting opportunities for um, the other products. So you know, for documents and sheets, in terms of integrating an add-on into a mobile um, version. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if Google would go will go down that line. I think, given the investment uh, the community has made in developing add-ons with the HTML service, I don't see them removing HTML service. Um, so if Google do go down that route, and the big um, word there is if there's been no indication that they will, then um, I think the best route would be to keep HTML service as an option, but also have a you know a similar sort of card service um, available to developers if, if they want to also you know develop stuff um, that integrates within the, the mobile um, offerings within Drive. Um, but um, I think we have got to wait and see on that one. And with regard to um that uh, manifest manipulation there on included libraries. Uh, what what about like like I try not to use libraries for my mm -hmm. for my add-ons, uh, but they're all domain restricted anyway. And I know that the guidelines, at least at one point in time, said you should avoid libraries for performance reasons. Yeah. And our 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 um, uh, is that still the case or? as far as as far as using outside libraries i might like to try playing around with them a little more but i i kind yeah. of just a little old school i like to know the code so it's it's interesting so it's something i've talked with bruce mcpherson um before with uh, about so as a chain is as you say not to use libraries um, within your add-ons, but Bruce has published a number of add-ons that do use libraries, and he's also tested the performance, and he says there's no difference. Um, so um, I, it, I think that kind of puts a you know a bit of a gray area in terms of you know I, I, I suppose at the end of the day the, the advice we should follow is the the, the advice and the documentation. Um, but it's interesting to know that that, that is guidance, and um, it, it doesn't. It's not. It means that you know if you really do want to use that uh, libraries in your add-ons, uh, other people have successfully successfully done that. I think that's a perhaps a, a good time, particularly as I've gone to old school webcam. Um, to um, 
end the show today. Um, so um, thanks for really now for uh, popping by and keeping me company. And um, hopefully that was useful to you. Uh, so until next time, goodbye. Cheers. Cheers.